to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. What are we doing here? What's going on, everybody? Do not adjust your television sets. I'm supposed to be sleeping right now. But you are not sleeping, Jason. You are here with me, Hold with on. Mike. Is that an option? It's, uh, it was. It's, it was. Not it, anymore. It will be an option in, in another decade when the children are gone. Okay. Uh, welcome in, one and all. You may be wondering why you're listening to us today, and, and that is a fair question. We... We made the decision to give you a surprise episode today. We thought it would be fun to um, record an extra one this week. Just, I think, just as a way of saying thanks for a great season, and we bonus, yeah, the, a little bonus episode. The combine is going on, and so it's like, hey, this is exciting. This is football time. Let's 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 bring a show to the people, and so here we are. And rather than like we can't contribute through like a forty yard dash or like a three cone drill, so we we contribute. Well, I mean, we could. Via our, we can know. do a forty-yard jog. I don't, I don't know that we could do a dash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this is the best way we can contribute to the weekend is with an extra show, and uh, it's it's one we have not done before. We decided we would hop on and give you a surprise draft, which is uh, to say that we are going to. Jason's going to be a participant in a twelve-team fast best ball draft right here live on the show. Mike and I will um, commentate that draft, talk about some of these players, and feel feel free to help me. Help slash criticize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and disagree or agree. We'll see how it goes. But it, it's fun right now. You know, best ball drafts are what's happening. And I'll, I'll give the disclaimer I did uh, last week, just so that people kind of understand when we talk about best ball drafts and best ball ADP. Um, it's going to come up a lot over the next few months because you don't have a lot of, you know, redraft mock drafts. We're pre NFL draft. So like best ball drafts are happening. These are actual drafts. Money is on the line. People are actually playing. And so it is a lot of fun and it is informative to understand how players are being valued. Uh, but best ball is a different format than redraft. So you do have some, you're going to see differences between how players are drafted in best ball with how they're drafted in redraft. But it's going to be a a good time today. We're going to do it live. Jason will share a link. People will jump in. And then it's 30 seconds a pick. So it's going to it's going to be wild. It's going to be fast and furious. So we'll do that momentarily. And I'd love to get everybody's comments if you're watching on YouTube. Share your thoughts on the draft. We're going to put All the right. draft board up. What? I just shared the link, so we Jay, will see you, how long it takes to fill. So you you have you shared with us that you have done 4 best ball drafts already <laughs> yes. because you are a degenerate right uh do you have any sense of the spot that you're hoping to be at like do I'm, you want to be in the top three do you want to be at the back turn um i i hope i'm at the 12 because so okay. far we were doing the math on this it seems impossible but um <laughs> we i've done four drafts i've been at the 12 for all four so i know exactly who's there um at at those positions but um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. We are waiting for looks like three more people. Once to once enter it the fills, draft. you've only got sixty seconds for it to start. So that's I, right. Uh, th that means I have very little time to tell people to head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Obviously, you can get in there, get the dynasty pass. I retweeted, so it's going to fill immediately. Well, uh, there was only one person left. And... I retweeted, so it's going to fill immediately. <laughs> so we got about 60 seconds before the draft starts, which is the exact amount of time that the Vikings rostered Madison with the new contract. Oh, why you got to do that to me? Oh, baby. <laughs> why you got to? That's our one bit. That's, of that's a low blow, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> that's our one bit of news we needed to share was Alexander Madison has been released. He signed a two-year contract last offseason. It turns out even the guarantees in that contract were not they were not what they were reported to no, be. No, which is, I mean, that's a little bit of a cautionary tale that we can not necessarily understand the full picture of the contracts reported, but Madison, the experiment, it's over. It appears that uh, your draft is filled, Jason. Is yes. That, is that right? Yes, it is. It's getting so, ready to start. 60 seconds it. left. Jason, uh, Jason, 
Brooks would want me to hit this. I'm at the 12. Hit it's, this button. That's not possible. Are you serious? <laughs> I am at the 12. That seems impossible. So, I don't know. I, so, someone's someone's doing me dirty. Are you <laughs> so, hard coded? I'm hard coded at the 12. <laughs> I guess. Wow. All right. Well, I'm gonna hit this drop because uh, Brooks will be happy. Best ball breakdown. Well, this will be our first chance to see if Jason's holding any grudges um, over last year. Although I, I tend to think that you aren't because I did hear a report. Yeah, <laughs> gross. Uh, that Quentin Johnston yep. ended up on one of your rosters. Is this is this a he did last night? Not a not just a TMZ rumor. It is not. Uh, this was a situation of in best ball. You you talked about it earlier, right? Well, there are certain differences that matter in best ball, and stacking is extremely important. So that's one of the things I'm going to be looking to try to do today is stack. I had Justin Herbert. I got him at a crazy value, uh, like 20 spots past ADP. And so I uh, I did do the stack there with Quentin Johnston. Well, the draft is underway. And again, if you want to follow along with the draft board, we'll be throwing it up periodically here on YouTube. Otherwise, I'll walk you through as much as I can. But the first round is kicking off. Jason's in the 12th position again. So uh, first pick was Christian McCaffrey. Then Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Jamar Chase. So CeeDee Lamb has been, I mean, he is like the hotness right now over Tyreek Hill in pretty much every draft I've seen. Which to me, I mean, I get, I understand that's a mistake to me. I would take, I would rather have Tyreek, but um, who who would you guys take between those two? I, I've gone back and forth, back and forth all offseason. I think CeeDee Lamb. I'm back on the CeeDee Lamb side. I would go Tyreek. So, but that's five wide receivers in a row. Then Bijan and Brees, which I think those two guys are going to be, whether it's redraft or best ball, I think they're going to be next to each other. Um, because I look, I, I think we, we know the talent of Brees Hall and what the output could be in an offense that's just mediocre in New York. But Bijan has more of the kind of hidden uh, excitement. Now, Jason, you grimaced because. Bijan Brees and then Kyron, Kyron Williams Kyron off the was, board. Kyron was who I was wanting. You were eyeballing Kyron. Yes, I was eyeballing uh, Kyron. I'm going to take A.J. Brown here. I'm on the clock, and I'm hoping that I can stack him so with Jalen go Hurts, Hurts. If, uh, if he comes back. and then So you took uh, A.J. Brown at the 12 and then Jonathan oh. Taylor. Yeah, I think people are, people are not high enough on Jonathan Taylor. He was fantastic last year in the games you played. He obviously was injured, and so he didn't have a great season. He didn't win people championships uh, the way that you know you you would have wanted him to do. And so, but on a per game basis, he was outstanding. I love the Colts' offense. I think they'll be even better with Anthony Richardson, even though some of the touchdowns might be vultured. I think Jonathan Taylor has a great season. The interesting thing here is Kyron Williams and Puka are first round picks, and that is. Imagine saying that yeah. out loud last year. Uh, your team, Brown and Taylor, so you got a wide out, you got a running back. Garrett Wilson, we we talked about how high he's going in best ball. That makes perfect sense because you're looking at the upside potential, and we know that uh, Garrett Wilson has the potential to 120 catches, 1,500 yards in an offense. So DJ Moore, though, went next, which well, we don't know the quarterback for DJ Moore. Sure we do. It's Caleb Williams. Okay, you're locked in. Yeah, I'm locked in. I, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine being a GM where your job is to try to win a Super Bowl. You know, you're not winning a Super Bowl with Fields. I think that they can build a really good team around Justin Fields, just not a Super Bowl champion. It's unique because Caleb Williams comes into probably the best case scenario for any number one pick. This is not a bottom dwelling team. They have a good defense. They went seven and ten. They ended the year strong. They just happen to have the pick because they traded uh, for it last year and Carolina handed it over. Yeah, imagine if Caleb Williams was going to Carolina, the team that owned the number one pick. It'd be like, oh, man, they don't have any weapons. It's, it's not working well. It is nice that you have, you're have you at the turn, Jason, because it does give you a lot of time to kind of commentate and share your thoughts on where these players are going. Marvin Harrison Jr., Goes 18 overall. So after your pick of Taylor, it went Wilson, DJ Moore, Saquon, Ayuk. I've seen but him. But Marvin Harrison at 18, ahead of HN, ahead of, um, you know, ETN. 
I've seen him in the first and Marv. Yeah. Who brother. He, right. He, he, it's, it's, it's pretty spicy. If you're a believer, I will say this. If you're drafting this time of year, generally speaking, rookies are a fantastic value before the NFL draft. Marvin Harrison. Oh, yeah, the, the top guys. I don't think they're going to be as no, no, no value. But, but once you get past those top three names and people aren't as familiar with the rookies, they don't want to draft him because they don't know if he's good or not. So that's an advantage. Like if you want to listen to our dynasty podcast, comes out on Wednesdays. It's a different RSS, different feed. So search for the Fantasy Faller, Footballers Dynasty Pod, and uh, we're on YouTube as well. That will take you through all the rookies that you need to know for the purposes of drafting pre-NFL draft. And we are all about the fun, right, Mike? I mean, we yeah. there is an aspect that is very fun to draft a rookie that you believe yeah, in. Yeah, it, well, it's the, the complete and total unknown of will it work out, especially at this point of you have no idea the location because we, as we have kind of mused about the, the chance of Marvin Harrison going to the New England Patriots, at three, I think it is it is not an unrealistic thing that could happen, and that would be uh, pretty de pretty devastating to people drafting him in the second round. Did we uh, did we comment on Brandon Ayuk being drafted like in the at middle 17? in the middle of the second round? You know what do we got uh, about six picks or so before Debo? I think that that's that's fascinating that Brandon Ayuk has made that jump. We I mean, we he has been highlighted in our uh, our truth series of just how consistent and and good Brandon Ayuk actually was. So I did that's that's a fascinating pick to me to go that early on on Ayuk. Yeah, Ayuk got seventeen right before Harrison, and then Achan. He's going to be very popular in best ball and in in redraft at number nineteen overall, first quarterback off the board. Josh Allen at twenty three. Now Jay. The the ADP currently for Jalen Hurts is thirty five point one. Mm -hmm. You are pick thirty six. You are you are you getting a little sweaty? At... I am getting a little sweaty. <laughs> I it's 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 worrisome uh, because what I'd like to do is is what I did in my last draft: start with AJ Brown, and then take Devonta Smith and Jalen Hurts and take the complete Eagle stack. Oh, you're going super stack. Super stack. So here's the thing about best ball and really about any league. You're playing for first. <laughs> like You're only playing for th things work out for my team. Right. So when I draft Jalen Hurts, I'm saying if I win, it's because things worked out and he was awesome. He, Kellen he, Moore, re resurgence of the offense. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's where – you know, if if Hertz is a league winner, then both AJ Brown and Devontae Smith have good weeks. We are almost to Jason's pick in the third round, so I need to catch you up, Jason. You are on the clock. We'll get to your pick just momentarily. Obviously, you have to make it. But um, Debo goes in the second round as well. You mentioned it, Josh Allen, Devontae Adams, third round picks: Olave, Pacheco, Metcalf, Tank Dell, Rashi Rice, <sighs> Laporte off the board. First tight end at thirty. Diggs, Rashad White, Pittman, Evans, Jalen Waddell, and Jason, where did you go with your third and fourth picks? Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith. I'm going Eagles super stack, baby, oh, and, man. and hero RB with Jonathan Taylor. So, so like you said, you, you're playing to win. Right. But I'll, you you might be playing – you might be last. Sure. <laughs> abso absolutely. I mean, dude, if, if, you're, if you're not first, <laughs> you're literally last. If you, if you ain't first, you're left. L-I-V-I-N, I'm living over here. So, uh, Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, we did have uh, extensive discussions the last two years, really, about what the Eagles offense looks like with and without Dallas Goddard's availability on the field. We have had some drama with A.J. Brown. He's, he literally called the local radio show to, to kind of squash that, mm -hmm. wants to be in Philly. And then we have, to, we have to decide what we believe about Kellen Moore in the offense. I mean, I think most of us thought this offense was going to be impervious to change last year. It wasn't. Um, you would have thought that kind of the foundational pieces, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown could have stabilized that better. Uh, we found out they're not banning the tush push. Yeah, I was, I was going to bring up two great pieces of, of information for uh, Jalen Hurts, for the Eagles. The tush push is so important for fantasy football. The amount of rushing touchdowns he gets, it is, it's, it's, it's unfair, but it's awesome. Um, and then it looks like 
Jason Kelsey, you know, he it was reported right after the I Super Bowl. That he, he, I told I, you guys it, it I, wasn't done. I, I know, I know, I know. I, but I, I I thought we got it straight from him. I like I'm I so we here's, did not. here's what happened. He talked to players in the locker room afterwards. He was emotional um after the you know, the the loss in the playoffs and then it was reported that it, that he was stepping away that he's that that was his last game okay and it was like reported as it was a done deal but he has since then clarified that it's not he still could step away he still could retire but it's not a done deal it's been softened a little bit he is deciding so if if he is there and the tush push is active i really like the offense still well, beyond uh, – so the first quarterback was Allen, just mentioning that second round, then Hurts at 36, Jason at the turn, picks up Hurts, and two more just went in the middle of the fourth round, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, back-to-back. -back. Uh, it's worth noting Jackson went ahead of Mahomes. Watching where Mahomes ends up in redrafts, best ball, is going to be very interesting. Uh, as we get through this fourth round, we're going to take a really quick break and then come back with the fifth round, and uh, Jason will continue – Building with Goddard. Dominating. And uh, some other Eagles, probably. <laughs> All right, we are back. We are uh, entering the fifth round of this live best ball draft, a surprise episode of the show for you. Travis Kelsey did go in the fourth round, pick 42. Uh, Mike, that is about a round after Sam Laporta. What was your reaction to seeing him go there? I think it's worth it. It makes uh, sense. Yeah, with with the way he finished the year, with the, uh, I mean, he's he's on the Super Bowl high, of course, but it, you know, even before that, I said I, I have no intentions of walking away. That was kind of my personal fear was if Travis Kelsey wins the Super Bowl. Does he ride off into the sunset? Because life is pretty good for the Kelseys uh, right now without sacrificing their bodies each and every week to football. So to see him get back on track, remembering in totality, the year for Travis Kelsey was great. It was not it was not first-round elite tight end production that, that everyone wanted when they drafted him, but it was still fantastic. And to get that, if you, if you get last year's season, or anything close to that in the fourth, very happy. you're very, very happy. All right, Jason, uh, I'd love to know your mindset as picks four and five, or sorry, five and six for your roster approach. Real quick, James Cook, neighbors at 46, then Amari Cooper and Roma Dunze, so two rookies out of three picks there in the fourth. Addison McBride, Reed Kirk, Flowers, JSN, who are you eyeballing with about five picks before year selection? I'm, I'm eyeballing Mark Andrews the most. Uh, he is Ooh. obviously a guy I've always loved, and I think he's – He actually submitted a little note to me. He said, you've been looking at him for years, yeah, he said, and yeah. he take, wants you to – Take it easy, pal. Take it easy. <laughs> so I won't take it easy. I'll take it <laughs> super hard, and, uh, <laughs> and I will draft Mark Andrews if he is there. So hey, that's take it, take it hard, everybody. Uh, hey. Yeah. Uh, mm, ooh, uh, so that's one. Um, We're doing it live. What you know? If you can get, if uh, you know, basically, I I either draft two quarterbacks or three quarterbacks, two tight ends or three tight ends, depending on whether I took one early. So I know I'm gonna finish this draft with two quarterbacks. I spent, uh, you know, my third round pick on Jalen Hurts, so I'm not going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna find another decent middle tier quarterback and hope. Uh, oh, Mark Andrews, the pick before. Yeah, Mark Andrews ends up going at pick 59, one selection before Jason, who is on the clock with a, a mere 20 seconds remaining. Uh, yeah. So you are now I wanted you're now up against it. You know, uh, As you make that selection. I wanted I'll, Josh Jacobs, Kenneth Walker, or Mark Andrews five picks ago. Not well, you have seven there. seconds left to make a selection. All right. I'm gonna, what? I'm still going to take a Raven. Um, it's just not going to be Mark Andrews. I'm going to take Derrick Henry. A uh, hopeful rate. What yes. happened to Hero RB? Uh, I uh, I think that the the running backs do dry up a little bit, and I I really think he's going to have a great season uh, in his in new Baltimore. Home. Yes, and then I do need a wide receiver. I don't like the wide receivers here at all. Um, Three, two, I'm end up with Calvin Ridley one. again. Okay, so I mean you, that's two two free agents. I know I know we have hopeful destinations, but you ended up with. Derrick Henry and Calvin Ridley at Calvin Ridley at sixty one. I am 
I think we're all curious about what trust level a team will have in bringing him in and handing him, is it going to be a wide receiver two position? Is it going to be a wide receiver one type of contract? He is now the bell of the ball with Higgins and Pittman going back to their homes. That's that's actually what has made me rise a little bit on Calvin Ridley. I'm not super in on him by any means, but I do expect him to get a, a very lucrative contract that, that says, hey, you're going to be our guy at whatever destination. Now, that might be bad. It might be Carolina, you know, being like, hey, come and and save us, and then Bryce Young just isn't the dude, and then I would regret my pick. So there, there is definitely risk here in taking two free agents. I So Andrews went at 59, Kincaid at 63. I think that's worth noting where those two running backs – or, sorry, those two tight ends went. It's also worth noting McBride went eight, nine picks ahead of Mark Andrews. Yeah, so, uh, McBride is – in every draft I've done, he is usually right next to Kelsey in either order. It tells me, though, that people look at Andrews as having the ceiling lowered. You know, because yeah, that's, the, that's fair. I, mean, th I think that's a fair assessment. Like, if you believe McBride – is in the Kelsey range, and that Andrews is going back behind them. There's, there's either injury fear or there's. That's that's where I was going. I'm going to check his game logs because it's. I don't I don't think it's fair, but in my head, Mark Andrews is an injury risk, and so going back through his his career, so, likely was very productive as so well. We have 16 games as a rookie, 15, 14, all 17, 15, and 10. So I mean. Honestly, fifteen, you're you would hope for every single game, but I think that's just the fact that most years he misses at least one or two, and then this one was was uh, of course the brutal uh, broken ankle. It it's I, I don't think it's fair, but it is in my head that I I think of Mark Andrews as as an injury risk, but when I, maybe he probably isn't. They're probably and and we didn't see four thousand yards like people hope for from Lamar as well, so maybe a little bit of the the passing game ceiling that that exists. We didn't get a chance to kind of go over the format, so I'm going to do it really quickly here because we got a long wait for Jason's next pick, and then I'll, I'll recap the round. But just so you know, it's 20 rounds in a best ball draft. Uh, best ball means that the best player on your roster out of those tw uh, 20 spots is going to be the one that counts in the one quarterback, two running back, three wide receiver, one tight end, one flex starter positions every week, right? And so, um, you know, we're going through 20 rounds. It's a longer draft. You have a lot of time to to take shots late. But right now your wide receivers are A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Calvin Ridley. Your running backs, Jonathan Taylor and uh, Derrick Henry. And then your quarterback is Jalen Tushpush Hurts. And, and best ball, if you're unfamiliar, the best lineup is started every week. You don't yeah, have to auto. make start-sit decisions. You don't make waiver adds when you leave the draft you're done for the year and then when the games play next year it's going to take whoever scored the most points at each position into your starting lineup so you're really you know like I've got queued up right now Christian Watson he's a player that I, I like much more in best ball than I do in your home redraft league because his athleticism means he can have a 75 yard touchdown any given week but he also has a habit of disappearing um a lot so far in his short career so you you the boom bust guys are great because I'm going to get the good games entered into my lineup. If you've got a consistent guy scoring, you know, nine fantasy points every single week, and at the end of the year he ends up with a good overall rank, mm -hmm. it is not really valuable. Team Team uh, Five really liked your Christian Watson advice. Oh, they just took him. Oh, okay. <laughs> good pick. Good pick. <laughs> Six, uh, six round ended up Ridley, Jones, Kincaid, Rid Anthony Richardson, Tajay Spears, Montgomery, Godwin, Kamara. All right, come on, Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, C.J. Stroud, Ramondre, Brian Robinson Jr. And oh, my gosh. Tony Pollard, Jason, uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Are they Jr. listening live? Brian Thomas Jr. just went next. All the wide receivers actually, are gone. Actually, the answer to that question was yes. <laughs> Wait, what? Because unbeknownst to you... Kyle the Borgogan is in this draft. And that he, was Kyle? And he literally oh took the gosh. pick. You stinking jerk. You, oh, my gosh. Kyle, you are fired. As you reveal your thought process, Kyle. I feel so betrayed. Stream sniped. 
<laughs> he was sniping you. Um, so Watson went at 77, then Najee, then Brian Thomas Jr., and you're about to be on the clock. Burrow, Herbert, Ingram, I Mixon. I am so upset. Kyle's saying he was cute. So whatever. Uh huh. All right. Um. Sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a tight end here because I think David Njoku uh has uh, wow you know massive upside. We saw at the end of last year what he could do. This is the place where uh, I heard that w as an endorsement for Watson. Is that what you heard, Mike? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a, it's an endorsement for his breakout was so strong that I think schematically the offense has to say like. We are working centerpiece level. He is a centerpiece of this offense going forward, and to to have him this late when when I'm probably gonna I'm more than likely gonna end up with three tight ends here. Um, so I'm gonna start one a little bit early, and then look, I wanted uh Brian Thomas Jr. because you know he's gonna go super high in the draft, and that is very helpful. He's he's pretty much the Should consensus be a first round pick. He's the consensus wide receiver four on most big boards. Um. He obviously was sniped by Kyle, so I'm going to take a different rookie, the rookie that I'm in love with. This is riskier. It's a little bit ahead of ADP because we don't know. He, he might not even be a first-round pick, but Troy Franklin, I, I absolutely love the talent. It's Franklin. Oh, <laughs> so, really? I you, been, you thought about that just, one, huh? Hey, this is a show for trying things on. Yeah, no, it's a surprise show. Come surprise in my town. <laughs> I don't know that one. Is oh, that the you show? are. That was you, the show, Franklin? You, sir. Live a blessed life. <laughs> it's, like, you, it's like not you, having you watched hated Caillou, that show, right? Oh, yeah, it it's not Caillou because Caillou. It's is, a mild show. They're yes, chill. It's 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 so, what our children actually need. It's so gentle. It's PBS it's, style. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's chill. Okay. It's yeah. soft. Uh, Troy it's Franklin. It's Franklin. Troy Franklin at eighty five. Then uh, Dak and Kyler, and then Justin Fields at ninety. So we actually saw Burrow, Herbert. Dak, QB Kyler, here. and Fields go between 80 and 90. Oh, uh, James Conner, 91. This is, this is such nonsense. I feel like I can't talk now that Kyle's in Did you in know here. that he was in here? No, I did not know that. Oh, and he's I so like, not. He's super not in here. I feel like I literally can't. I, I can't. You can. You just just talk freely. Uh, he won't do it again. No, no. That was just <laughs> coincidence. Um, <laughs> but he will do it again. <laughs> because the thing is, is I want to reach on a guy. Uh, I want to reach like 20 spots ahead. Um, well, you're going to have to with Kyle here. Well, no, but he picks before me, and it's it makes sense. Right now, the ADP for Ty Chandler is very, very low. He already went. Did he? Yeah. Pick, oh. Pick 90. He just Fantastic. went at 95. Fantastic. I don't have to worry about firing Kyle Also, if you twice. name somebody at all, he will go immediately. It's, it's really Im impressive. Okay. Brock Bowers at 94, Mike. Taking a shot on rookie impact at tight end. Eckler at 96, guys. Oh, man. If he is, is healthy. I have, I have passed him in so many drafts, and I just don't know what to do. Does it feel like you're betraying a friend? Uh, it absolutely does. I've, yeah. I've had him forever. We love the man. We've had him on the show. He's a good friend of the show. Um, you know, you, I just watched that insane workout video from oh, like a week ago. Where, where he's he, doing pull-ups and then with his feet holding a 100-pound dumbbell? Yeah. And not just doing pull-ups, just crushing, crushing pull-ups like they're nothing. Like he's lifting a butterfly up with his hundred-pound extra weight held by his feet. It, the thought of doing a pull-up with an extra hundred pounds. The thought of doing a pull-up, <laughs> well, incredibly hard. Some, some of us can crank out a couple pull-ups yeah, here and yeah, there, yeah. but an extra hundo. Last year's number two That's running superhero back. superhero stuff. Raheem Mostert is the yep. first pick of the ninth round. Then uh, Brock Purdy goes in the ninth. Kyle Pitts in the ninth. Hollywood. Saw some Hollywood to Jacksonville uh, mutterings. So the, I mean, Because he's going to help. potentially, I mean, I want your he's guys a free a, agent. I Nobody want, talks about it. I want your guys' help here on wide receiver. Okay. Um, Give us a couple names. Well, you've got the board up in front of you as well. Right now, ADP-wise, it would be Jacoby Myers, Cortland Sutton, Keon Coleman, Tyler Lockett. Uh, so... I'm not in love with any of those no, players. No, it doesn't feel like somebody's s standing out. I mean, Lad, Lad McConkey's coming soon. But. Yeah, I, I should be able to get him at the next turn. His his ADP is significantly further. And so even though you, you might like someone more, um, now I guess maybe I should be looking at that second quarterback spot um, right now. Yeah, Jordan Love's there, Jordan too, Love is there. is a very good value. He's usually pick 85, and we're at 108. 
So I'll take Jordan Love unless he goes right here. Yeah, you're you're just uh Is this one the first time away. I can say a name and get him? Hmm? We'll find out. We get eighteen seconds to find out if you get sniped on Jordan Love. And then you guys need to help me with the uh next one. Yeah, Swift, who doesn't have a team, went at one oh six. Chase Brown ahead of him. Really? Zamir White at okay. one oh seven. Jason, you are on the clock. I do think Oh, that's think, a the, Would you go Jordan Love or would you go Tua, Mike? Um you know Tua's going to have a hot start. He always does. Yeah. About to get a contract, too, by the way. They are talking. They, they are He's going to get big money. I think I would go. Ten seconds. I think I'd go Jordan. If I'm taking a quarterback, I think I'm going Jordan yeah, Love. Yeah, I'm going Jordan Love. I've got okay. him queued up, so I'm going to let the, the clock run out so it, it takes him so I can keep looking. Keon Coleman saw him mocked in a first-round uh, position recently. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard to take some of these older um, wide receivers that – you know, Ty I'm basically between Tyler Lockett and Keon Coleman Ooh, here. So do I go? I don't like Lockett. Old veteran yeah. or young rookie? I don't like Lockett. All right. I think if you want the opinion, I, I think I would take a rookie and just hope hope you got the Kansas City Chiefs guy. Sure. All right. So I'm going to take. Uh, He's got took, two shots at it now with Franklin and Keon Coleman. I will end this draft with probably seven rookies. Like I, I will uh, as as it gets later and later, there are rookies that I like that I've scouted that I think are good I think they're they'll make an impact this season and they're usually sorted in with veterans who are just dudes that do so little so to keep uh, everyone caught up here Jason's team so far AJ Brown Jonathan Taylor that's how you started out then Jalen Hurts Devonta Smith to complete your Philadelphia Eagles super stack you're risking it on old man Derrick Henry hoping he ends up uh, in Baltimore or Dallas, I would imagine. Yep. Calvin Ridley, David Njoku, rookie, incoming rookie Troy Franklin, Jordan Love, and incoming rookie Keon Coleman. So, how uh, you feel? I, I feel I feel pretty good. Um, I I don't have any major problems. It, it, it's any gonna, indi indigestion or it's good, always always <laughs> indigestion. Um, I mean, one hundred percent of my life. Uh, so obviously I'm really short at running back that's where I'm going to be looking uh here soon hopefully get some you know a Trey Benson some some of these yeah, what, rookies that are coming in what are some running back names that you'd be thinking about because we're in round 10 round 11 again we're going it's a 20 round draft but is there anybody with tremendous upside that you're like hey I hope this guy gets all the way back around to me I I, I would say the 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 rookie combination of Trey Benson and Blake Corum um are guys that I am very very interested in considering I only have two older running backs right now uh Dontavian Wicks I would love him as a an explosive downfield threat that pairs with Jordan, Jordan Love, Love to yeah. stack there um th that's pretty much where I'm looking and then I'm also going to start thinking about tight ends and go through the list and try to highlight like what guys later I would like to pair with Najoku to you know, maybe a, a Michael Mayer. Do you have – so Jake Ferguson just went at pick 117. Any regrets of not taking Jake Ferguson over Keon He did Coleman? cross my mind at that point. Um, The problem is the wide receivers. You, you know, you're going to need eight, nine wide receivers okay. here. And when, when you don't take uh, the shot at a good wide receiver in Keon Coleman, you're going to end up with your roster filled with, you know, John Domingos. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I feel like I should, because now we've revealed that Kyle snuck into this draft when you posted the link, I'm going to read his team as well. Mike, you can react to it. Sure. Bijan was his first pick. He was the Marvin Harrison drafter. He also got Diggs in the third round. That's interesting. Cause he, he went ahead of Pittman and Evans and he got, uh, Stefan Diggs. I believe he said about eight picks yeah, after ADP. That seems good. Kelsey in the fourth. So Diggs and Kelsey, he's going ADP value there. Kenneth Walker and David Montgomery. Those are two running backs I've been targeting. Pretty at, sneaky at, there at their ADP all over. I mean, they, no regret over Henry over Montgomery there. Um, potential, potential. Yeah, I, I I like both players this season. Um, I if you swapped Montgomery with Henry, I would feel identical about my team. And then uh, Brian Thomas Jr., Justin Fields, Romeo Dobbs, Tyler Lockett. I think the Fields pick, that's a homer pick. He expects him to <laughs> land in Atlanta. <laughs> Kyle, you can weigh in. Is he on the microphone today? I'm Kyle, here you're not invisible. Um, what was I accurate with your field selection? Oh yeah, I'm manifesting the stack. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was oh manifesting a stack. That's a new strategy. 
That's that's smart. Draft it into existence. Yeah. Um, let me give you a quick rundown here. Uh, by the way, what was your reaction to to Kyle's team there, Mike? I uh, I think it's a good combo so far. Like I I love the Travis Kelsey pick in the fourth. I uh, Stephon Diggs is such a struggle because the name power still is so tremendous. I feel like Getting you were the after. most emotionally impacted by what happened. Like, yes. I don't know if it was confusion, befuddlement. Uh, it's it, because like the value is there, eight picks after ADP. But I uh, like we talked about in our truth episode. JD, oh, I need Trey Benson. <laughs> I, need, I need him to get to me. So you're three picks out. I by don't. The way. Re- I don't remember the swing of where Stephon Diggs his second half truth score, but it was. Something like wide receiver eighty. Something. Yeah, it was like eighty six. It, it was a player who was actively harming your team, and the OC was brought back. So it's yeah. Stephon Diggs is, is a is a player that I still Jason, don't know right. what to do with. I'm Jason on, is on the clock. I'm on the clock. I'm going to take Trey Benson with my other one. Do you guys think I should be going wide receiver, tight end? Uh, you know, the, if you look at those two, or or potentially probably, another probably, running back. I think you named all four positions. Um, <laughs> I did not ma- name a quarterback. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I So you're going to let Trey Brent – so you like Benson more than even like Jalen Wright, who's kind of being talked about right yes, now. Yes, yes. Uh, I think he'll be drafted higher. You know, Ferguson was somebody in the previous selection that I thought maybe you'd consider, but I, I guess I'd go wide receiver oh, this potentially. Is a, this is easy. Oh, I, you got your I pick. figured it out. Yeah. I'm, oh! oh! I, I'm, I'm, gra- I'm grabbing my lad, uh, Lad McConkey. A uh, player that all three of us like. Uh, we're we're much higher than consensus. Now, a rookie wide receiver. Yeah, Lad McConkey at one thirty three. Now I just want to comment like your last four wide receiver selections. They have no teams. Yeah, that's true. And uh, but but all four will have teams. Yes, they will. So I'm not too. I mean, I, it, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things it's where interesting, at though. this time of the year there is some randomness that is completely outside of your control, right? Like I could have bye week problems. You know, but, right? Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts, Jordan Love, they have the same bye week. Whoops. You know, and and maybe that is an argument to take the approach this time of year for three quarterbacks, three tight end approach, as opposed to grabbing those studs. Um, since you don't know bye weeks and teams sometimes, but uh, yeah, I'm stacking up the rookies here too. Corum would have gone ahead of ben- Benson had he been there for you, because Blake Corum ended up going at one twenty five. I would have drafted Benson ahead of Corum, but um, I th- that's how I see it. Just because you have no decorum. hey oh. Hmm. All right, quick break. Back with uh, the rest of the 12th round and Jason's uh, budding Philadelphia Eagles slash rookie roster. Well, Kyle, the Borgogan, the analytics, uh, you know, beast himself really paid attention to Gabe Davis's Instagram and Gabe Davis was <laughs> dropping the analytics and Kyle said he was you know what I'm in because 138 Kyle Gabe Davis on your roster a uh, little pat on the butt to the analytics crew Gabe the babe is made for best ball I don't even know what team he's on but I like it yeah I mean he has he is definitely made for I think the wide receiver two for Josh Allen is made for best ball so, Not, you, so, so you, you're calling for it, if Gabe doesn't go back to Buffalo, I'm out. You're you know out, the perfect okay. home for Gabe Davis, right? Buffalo. Guys, <laughs> no, no, no. He goes where his archetype goes or went. Who was just released? MVS. Yeah, he's like MVS. Oh, all right. Reborn. I'll be back in. I'll be back in. Uh, but, some deep touchdowns. Uh, Xavier Worthy at 140. Demario Douglas. Um at 143, I'm not sure what the confidence level on yeah. Mario Douglas is. I almost offered you, Mike, a trade okay. in our dynasty, Ew. and I had it one for one. I'm, I don't know what the – I didn't do it, but I was sending you to Mario Douglas, and I was going to have you send me Rashad Bateman. Oh. And I didn't know what to do. So I, I had it, like, ready to send, and I'm like, I – That's an interesting – because I, I also have Zay Flowers, so – Oh, I didn't see – so that might have been – it it may have been, but yeah. we're we're both kind of on that. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't know, man. I know it's it's gonna, so. I've seen which side would you like I better? Saw the in that film one? of I didn't, Rashad I didn't Bateman. Hear the, what was the trade? Demario Day. Uh, I was offering Demario Douglas to Mike for Rashad Bateman. That was going to be the straight up dynasty trade. 
but I didn't. I, I wavered. I didn't hit the button. I'm still in, maybe wow. interested. I don't know. I would take the still hopeful upside of Bateman. But that was said with some real yeah, because, malaise. Yeah, because it's not going to happen. Because Douglas is a he, he's a floor player where you're just you're hoping that the the reception total goes up, but trapped in a terrible offense. But Rashad Bateman is R Rashad Bateman feels he's like trapped in a terrible he's body. Going to be, <laughs> I, I think he's trapped in a situation that you are just desperately praying that. Once he gets off the team, he can resurrect his career, which is boy, what those, a place those, to be. Those are not good dynasty bets that I suggest people should make. All right, I'm going to ask you guys about tight ends. I'm going to take a tight end here. Um, right now, the top two uh, on ADP are Pat Fryermuth and Darren Waller. Right. Which one do you guys like better out of those two? Boy, it, it's a question of whether you think the ship has sailed on Darren Waller, and I tend to think it has. So I think I would I'd probably lean the Fryermuth side and hope that um, the the Janu Smith Arthur Smith mm -hmm. uh, Muth gets Luth. That's, that's kind of how I that's, lean. That's where I was. That's who I'm hoping for. So he will go immediately. So before, uh, for just to speak, Darren Pat Waller. Fryermuth. Did he no, go? he did. Yep. He went. Yeah. Yep, right there. So, so uh, for Darren Waller, not trying to yeah, talk you No, in. talk him up. Talk okay, him up. I'll He's talk all him that's up. left. So last year before the injury in week eight, best ball format, he would have given you uh, three spike weeks of uh, 10.6, 12.6, and 19.3. Okay. Then I will take Darren Waller. After he Darren came Waller back from the injury. Darren Waller 156 is very good for best ball. After the injury, though, he did nothing. <laughs> Um, no, I think that's a great best ball pick at 156. And then I'm going to go with yet another running back. Uh, he's my third running back overall, Braylon Allen. Oh, baby, I was going to try and talk to you into last on your last turn. I'm yeah. a little, I'm a little higher on Braylon Allen than I've been all off season. Actually. Oh, welcome in. Are you pretty? Oh, is dude. he at your two? Yeah, he's just he's a Hulk. Like he is the Incredible Hulk. Did you out watch there. 2022 versus 23 film on Braylon Allen? No, just 23. He was less hulky in 2022 but it, it seemed like he had a little more a little more juice but i'm actually pretty in on braylon allen contributing at the next level there's a bunch of these you know scat back third down back guys i'm not interested like i would definitely take like bucky irving went ahead of braylon allen i would much i'd be on the allen side it's on that the the thing for braylon allen to me is it won't it won't surprise me if this is all or nothing like he has the the physical capability like his his muscles and his body is this is the prototypical guy who could go in and be a three down running back he has that's what yeah he has chops at, at like he can catch I wouldn't say his his receiving work is elite by any means but he can, it's something that he can do and his production profile and breakout age are redonkulous he's, I think he's still twenty right now he's like a baby <laughs> boy. Is a, those are great picks. Those might have been the best picks of the draft, in my opinion, the Waller-Allen combo for your roster. Uh, let me give you a rundown of, of round 13 for those listening and not watching. If you're on YouTube, the draft board is up on the screen, and you can follow along. But Jason went McConkey, and then Darren Waller, and then it went Johnston, Irving, Fryermuth, Yoshivas, the shot on Yoshivas in Cincinnati, Wandale, Drake May. Oh, I'm reading the wrong direction. Yep, my screen was not <laughs> wide enough. That's the backwards order of the 13th round <laughs> Thank for you. those interested in Just the backwards order. pause the show, play it in reverse. I felt like something was wrong when uh, when Yoshi Voss was uh, going right before Wandale. But, no, it's Mayer, Cooks, McLaughlin, Adnai Mitchell, who I really like. I know Jason's on the other side of that one. Deshaun mm -hmm. Monson, Drake May, back-to-back. -back. Drake May at 150. And then Robinson, Yoshi Voss, Fryermuth ahead of Jason Irving, Johnston, Waller, Braylon Allen, and then Algier, Mayfield, Roman Wilson. That's uh, uh, an interesting name. Aaron Rodgers at 161, Mike. Yeah, I was looking at with with Baker and Aaron Rodgers going there, and now Geno Smith just went on the 14th round. Jay, how do you feel about your going in on Jordan Love in the ninth round? Um, when yeah, I, I, not, I, I'm not saying I like by I, comparison. I'll, have, by I'll com have Jordan Love ranked over those guys, but when you only need one player on on a given week, Aaron Rodgers, if he's Aaron Rodgers healthy, is, uh, he's he's off my board. I wouldn't draft really? him. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, you to, feel like no spike weeks from Rodgers coming? I feel that's like actually, we're not enough. That's a surprising take because Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers should have some weeks. They could have weeks. I, I think Aaron Rodgers – I guess I, he's I didn't gone get from should chance. to could in your <laughs> I, mind. I didn't get a chance um, last year, but I, I felt like Aaron Rodgers – lost a step his last year in Green Bay, and he wasn't going to be very good last year. We didn't get to see. Maybe he would have been awesome and and uh, been the MVP form he was just two years prior. But now another year older, coming off of an Achilles with my belief that he had lost a bit beforehand. I, I'm just let like, me, I don't want it. Let me bring up a name. By the way, uh, there are gambles to be made in best ball when it comes to players coming off of injury. For instance... T.J. Hawkinson went with the last pick of the 10th round. Mm -hmm. And we know he's going to miss a little bit of time or is likely to miss time to start the year. At what point would you start glancing the direction of a, a recently mentioned uh, player who posted a video of him running, but J.K. Dobbins or Ooh. somebody like that? Like, when do you start considering, oh, you know, we're, we're in the range now of, of running back names where ADP-wise you're into, you know, Elijah Mitchell – um, Antonio Gibson and Damian Pierce, who was, you know, people completely dunk on him for last year, but he was hurt for a part of the year as well. Uh, Rico Dowdle and Kenneth Gainwell, like suddenly the injured upside of certain players may look tantalizing. Yeah, uh, when when you get this far in, that, I mean, that's about where you start looking at J.K. Dobbins. Now, I would rather take so like they're they're near in ADP to one another. Uh, Ray Davis. And J.K. Dobbins, Ray Davis is is an incoming rookie. He's older, which I don't like, but his profile is very good, very productive, great pass catcher. Um, was very good at the Senior Bowl. So this late, I would go Ray Davis over J.K. Dobbins, but he would J.K. Dobbins is definitely in play. So, so Jalen Wright went one seventy two, rookie running back. Jalen Wright, Joshua Palmer at one seventy four. I think that is a little bit sneaky. Yeah, and then Kyborg. His last three picks have been Wandale, Marvin Mims, and Traylon Burks. I like the Traylon Burks one. Oh, ja Jalen body. Jalen Polk at 176, another rookie on the way in. Jason, you're three picks out. You just took Waller hoping and for, Allen. Hoping for Ray Davis. He won't, I'm sure, get to me because they don't usually. Um, and then I'm sitting here with uh, – Okay, you're one pick away, Jason. You have a chance at Ray Davis. Antonio Gibson off the board. 178. And then I, I think I'd like to put a wide receiver, uh, another wide receiver on my team. So why don't you guys look at that and um, – Look at for wide receivers? Yeah, see if there's a wide receiver that you especially like. I, I know that there's a rookie I like, but um, maybe there's a vet. Yeah, I mean, Rashad Bateman is the name that we just talked about in that trade area, and he is on the board. That's a name that I would I'm be considering. I'm surprised you glossed over Jalen Hyatt there, Andy. Yeah, he's gloss worthy, man. Oh, oh no, oh, your guy, your guy is. Yeah, out. I like Jalen Hyatt. I just it's hard to paint the picture of. Like, I think they they are definitely uh, going to take a top. Have you wide guys? Receiver have you and, guys uh, watched Ricky Pearsall? Yeah. Do you like him or not? Because I I'm meh. I'm in on him. Kyle's out on him. Yeah, I'm meh. I'm meh. You're meh. I'm with you. You took Ray Davis, by the way. You got him at 180. Yes. Uh, Mike is in the meh camp. All I, right. So I you think would Bateman take and ba baseball is you would take Bateman over Pearsall, then I will do the same. Oh, look at that, Bateman. <laughs> Can't talk. <laughs> Can't talk. So uh, Ray Davis, Rashad Bateman. The he won't make it back now. Um, and you took Ray Davis, so I wasn't. It didn't, didn't want to try and talk you know, but at what point does Elijah Mitchell? become an interesting just like because you don't this is again it, we we don't we love Christian McCaffrey but you you have to play you know different scenarios and in best ball it's everything kind of goes right for your team yeah, if yeah. I, there you go and Elijah Mitchell just went yeah if, if we if if McCaffrey misses time Elijah Mitchell's incredible there will be star running backs next year that get injured and miss and their backups will be great picks. So you, it, it, those are players you do want to look for. Last year, Jerome Ford was a very great last, you know, late round pick because unfortunately Chubb went down. Now you're just kind of playing a little luck when you do that. But at the same time, Jerome Ford is drafted in 100 percent of leagues. So someone's team got really, you know, if oh you didn't draft them, well someone else did, and they get those points. So you you do sometimes need to take shots at those. 
uh, insurance running backs when there is a clear line of succession. Uh, Elijah Mitchell would probably be the best example of that. What's your thought process with your tight end and quarterback situation right now, Jason? You have, uh, I think, five picks remaining, right? Yep. I definitely, or, sorry, four picks remaining. I definitely want um, – so I've got two more turns. Like if I, Derek Carr came back, would you select him? A no, starter? I, I'm I'm done with Jalen Hurts and, and Jordan Love. You're, uh, as in you're, you're as content in with I, those I'm two. I'm content. Jalen Hurts um, is a very consistent scorer. I would imagine, it, you know, I'm, I'm playing as if he is having a good season. Um, and if he does, he's going to crack my roster most weeks. Uh, you know, a, a Derek Carr or a Stafford or someone is like, they're not going to score because only one of these players scores at a time at the quarterback position. Now, you feel good about any end, of these tight ends that are out there? I mean, it's, it's um, slim pickings right now. Noah Fant's a starter. Davis Allen could be a starter. Um, I like Davis Allen quite a bit. I, I actually think Hunter Henry finds a good home this offseason and has been a touchdown machine. And Greg Dulcich is another like player. Four, yeah, four bedroom, this, five was, bedroom. It's going to bring up the D. <laughs> Yeah, Greg, Greg, Dulcich Greg Dulcich is a guy I have been targeting quite a bit. Yeah, so, I thought he was thinking about Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael Phoenix. Uh, Greg Dulcich. I mean, what if? Wait, there is a legit chance that Phoenix could get drafted by Denver. This this show, and he would be throwing this, it to the D. <laughs> this this show. <laughs> Penis, and it's and our, the D. And our sophomoric brains oh, yes. could not comprehend that happening. I dare you to go this Dulcich the, the universe Phoenix with would, these next two picks. It would fold, I dare you. It would fold in on itself. You can create black holes with situations <laughs> like that. Oh man, how funny. <laughs> right? Um well I was I was really hoping for um uh Allen, but he got drafted. Davis so, Allen yeah, off the board. McCarthy, by the way. JJ McCarthy went at one ninety two. Derek Carr at 191, so you weren't going to have a shot at him anyway. Carr would have been a little tempting to me, but I understand what you're saying. Like, Hurts, selecting him where you did, you're trying to buy yourself a roster spot elsewhere, right? Right, exactly right. And I, and I look at it that way. When you take an early guy, I'm saying I get an extra running back or wide receiver. If, if you're drafting and spending high capital, you know, if, if you go and say, I'm going to get Sam Laporta, and I'm going to spend a second-round pick on that, and then you're going to fill in more tight ends later, it's like, well, either you hit with Laporta, and he's going to be the one scoring almost every week, or you whiffed with Laporta, and then that's when you would need the third tight end. But then if you whiffed with your second-round pick, you're probably not winning the league. Right. So um, you, that's kind of how you have to approach these best ball leagues. All right. Jason's team, real quick, make sure we're on the same page. A.J. Brown, Jonathan Taylor, Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith, Derek Henry, Calvin Ridley, David Njoku, Troy Franklin, Jordan Love, Keon Coleman, Trey Benson, Ladd McConkey, Darren Waller, Braylon Allen, incoming rookie, Ray Davis, incoming rookie running back, both of those, and Rashad Bateman. Two quarterbacks, five wideouts, seven wide receivers, two tight ends. And this is where you start really looking at, at, the, at what Andy just said, the numbers of your positions. I know I'm going to end up with three tight ends. I will take one more. So that leaves me three more picks between running back and wide receiver. So I will either take two more wide receivers and a running back or two more running backs and a wide receiver. And so there's you, a there's one running back that I think is worth gambling on here at 204. Tell me who it is. Miles Sanders. If, tell me why. If you look at last he because is last year's a broken rich. He's rich. <laughs> he's no, last year's a broken year. Dave Canales has come in and talked about committing to the running game. Yeah. And, you know, last year was broken for that entire offense, that team. They switched head coaches. Like, you know, there's a world where there's some renewed success there. Okay. But I'm saying that out loud. I'm not the one having to make the pick. Um, but to me, that's like this is a player that was going so tremendously high last year. Uh, high draft capital pick, has had success in Philadelphia. I just feel like last year was so broken that there's a chance you could give him a pass. Okay, so if I – Oh, dang. Pearsall off the I, board. He was, he was the, who I was really hoping made it back. He, I'm three picks away and almost took him last round. That that never happens in when you're at the turn. All right, so right now I've got queued up Greg Dulcich and Miles Sanders here. Um, I will I will take your approach. I mean, we're at, we're at the place here. Are we where, talking wide receivers? Uh, do you have a wide receiver you Demarcus like? Demarcus Robinson. 
I do love Demarcus Robinson. For the value. Los Angeles Rams. I mean, he's back, right? Yeah, yeah he, just yeah, yeah, he, he, he just re-upped. And okay, then you know what I'm going to do? That's what he said. He walked in and he said, I'm back, right? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? You're like, yeah, here's $5 million. What are you going to do? What is Kyle, are you what, pivoting? What, what is, what, how many tight ends does Kyle have? <laughs> Kyle has not enough. Oh, he's got he's got one. Yeah, he's got Kelsey. He's doing what you should do. It's if you spend a high draft capital uh, pick on a tight end, he's just gonna have two. But I don't want. Well, man, Greg Dulcich. I want to gamble with him. So you took Miles Sanders. You committed there. Yeah. So do I take Demarcus Robinson and gamble with Greg Dulcich? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I asked and answered. Yeah, I think I think you can gamble. I mean, he. I don't know if he's going to take Dulcich or not, but we're not talking about, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, losing I, some some buried if, treasure. If I have to go, that's certain Hunter Henry yeah. or um, Brevin Jordan. Honestly, Donald Parham is interesting to me. Sure, because they don't have the money to bring back Gerald Everett, so Parham and he doesn't will, have the talent to come back. So right, so oh man. Donald Parham will be the primary tight end for before Brock Bowers. Before I was gonna Herber. say, yeah, that's fair. If they they draft Brock Bowers, that changes. So, um, yeah, I, you know, you took your shot. Demarcus Robinson, though, injury history. He was just even without injuries, he was heavily involved in that offense. He, those are one of the hardest he, positions to kind of project. Is you're like, oh. He needs something to happen. Not necessarily. You don't need something to happen in that offense. He usurped Tutu Atwell by the end of the year, and Tutu was having a, a good season on his own. So Tank Bigsby at 207, taking the shot there on a uh, bounce-back season. Uh, the team, a couple teams after you. Kyborg about to go back on the clock. His last few picks, he went with Daniel Jones, and now he took Bryce Young at 210. So his, what his, wider, doing, his, his quarterback room is Fields, Daniel Jones, and Bryce Young. And so that's the kind of thing that puts you into an institution. Yeah. So good luck in uh, hey. the straight jacket. I was, if, if Daniel Jones maintains control of his starting job, with with the way that he does run, he will give you a couple weeks. Now, he did take Daniel Jones above Derek Carr, just worth noting. I, I'm i okay with just that. Just for upside. Dan. Yeah, I'm yeah, okay I, with I, that. I prefer that. I, I would rather have. I mean, the the issue here is you don't know that he's going to be the starter for the Giants for sure. I, th I think it's but assuming most that, likely that is that is the most likely outcome. Assuming both of these players, Derek Carr and Daniel Jones, played the entire season, for fantasy purposes, I want the upside of the rushing touchdowns from Daniel Jones. Well, as we wait for your final two picks, Jason, uh, it's worth noting. Uh, Give me that D. <laughs> I'm I want Greg Dulcich to get back to me. Uh, <laughs> That's a clip. So, uh, Dan, speaking of uh, the D, Daniel Jones, this year is uh, it's a dead cap hit of, of sixty nine million. I'm so that's sorry, not everybody. Happening. Nice. Um, and he's, I think we're locked in that he's going to be the guy. It would be next year when the dead cap drops to twenty two. I guess the the issue is, do you just do they have a Jaden Daniels fall to them? Yeah. and Draft someone that just they're like, eh, you're the starter now. I guess it could happen. Yeah, there, there's some interesting chatter that Kyle just shared about um, J.J. McCarthy being in play at two or three in the NFL draft. Yeah, we got a tweet here from wow. Ben Standig, who is a senior writer for The Athletic, and that's pretty hot news coming out of the the combine. I mean, that, that's been the kind of uh, drumbeat has been it McCarthy ha it, being it higher been and higher all the way up to eight, but now it's like, you know, you know, we we knew that Mac Jones was in contention for the 49ers when they took Trey Lance, right? That, right. I mean, they were really – and that was a – it reminds me of a similar situation in terms of just moving up and up. But um, unfortunately for you, Jason, Phoenix has been drafted. Oh, no. And Greg Dulcich oh, is gone. Oh, no. No D. No for, D for and no you. Phoenix. Wow. And uh, I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> this is not – this is Saturday – it's a Saturday show. This is a bonus episode. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, yeah. we're almost wrapped up. Frank Gore Jr., Noah Fant. Fant would have been somebody that you could have pivoted to easily. Sure. Uh, I, I, th I think I like Hunter Henry and Donald Parham <laughs> better than Fant. Which one of those two guys would you, got, would you guys? The one with the team. <laughs> okay. You, you don't is think. Hen is Henry under contract? Henry's a free agent. Yeah, the one with the team. Okay. 
Uh, I, the irony is that Henry could very well, like, but, ruin your par hand pick. Like, if, if I, I guess back. they don't really have the free agent money probably to do that. They mm. probably go draft, but, but yeah, they're... I guess Henry will land someplace, and so. All right, so I'm seven picks away, and we're looking for some upside shot at running back or wide receiver. Now, looking at my team, running back Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, three rookies, and Miles Sanders. Do I need a running back more, or at wide receiver AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Calvin Ridley, Rashad Bateman, Demarcus Robinson, and three rookies? Which position would you be trying to focus on? Mike, uh, I'm not listening to anything you're saying. I'm looking at the players in the ADP. Okay, um, tell me who you like. All right, so I'm looking at running backs and wide receivers, just trying to find any sneaky, any any story that we can tell ourselves that this player will have some. So, like ADP wise, just for those listening, it's at the top is Kenneth Gainwell, uh, Israel Abanacanda. <laughs> Alexander uh, Madison, Jermaine, uh, he's he's in the the list somewhere. Uh, Jermaine Burton, who I have I recently told Kyle, I think he is an interesting prospect as well. Kyle gave me the eh, but it, it, Burton's production, oh, yeah, per, his production profile is what his he uh, played this last year at Alabama, yeah, and up. his his a dot is out of control. His, like, his it, speed is great. And he was does just, reading rainbow too, right? Jermaine Burton. <laughs> he's, yeah, you look, look. It's late. It's a Saturday. You can say anything <laughs> you, can you want. Say anything you want to say. It's a Saturday show. I definitely <laughs> wasn't going to say that, but I was like, it's round nineteen. Yeah, yeah. This is this is when those jokes belong. So as as a someone who projects the archetype is deep threat, big touchdowns. I don't know. It's, okay. Or did you mention Darius Slayton? No, that's the next name I was yeah. going to go to of Darius Slayton. Who, that's where I'd take a shot. He's been the leading wide receiver for the Giants for two straight they years. Can't, they can't get rid of him. They, he has, <laughs> they want he has to, monster they games. He has he, monster games every year. He does have uh, very big individual games, which is what you're looking for in best ball. Your, your last round pick is more likely to break in once or twice with big scores than to just become an every week starter. Now, alternatively, if you take that shot on someone like Izzy, um, that's when a you know Brees Hall goes down, and you've got someone more relevant for the whole season. Yeah, the the insurance running backs, I would be looking at. Um, well, Abanikanda looks like he went. Um, what is what is Michael Carter's contract status? I he's not. He's I don't think he's under contract. By the way, Let Jason, who check. did you go with? People would like to know. I, I, yeah, no, I, he's he's under contract with the Cardinals. Funny. Um, I uh, took Donald Parham Jr. and Darius Slayton for my final picks. All right. Well, uh, what did the final positional breakdown end up for your team? So two quarterbacks, six running backs, nine wide receivers, and three tight ends. And you don't draft anywhere but the 12th spot, right? That's kind of what you I'm hard-coded, it seems, because <laughs> I think we did the math, and it was like one in 240-something thousand yes. uh, uh, that I was Something's not randomized right. here. Um, <laughs> your wide receivers are A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Calvin Ridley, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman, Lad McConkie, Rish Rashad Bateman, Demarcus Robinson, and Darius Slayton with your last pick. Your running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, Trey Benson, Braylon Allen. Uh, both of those seem like like you're going to get one one nice year out of at least one of those guys. Ray Davis, uh, Miles Sanders, and then your tight end position, Najoku, Donald Parham, Darren Waller, maybe. with Hurts and Love at quarterback. Maybe. Maybe. What's the maybe? No, no, what? he definitely the, the, took those. I, those players. are my guys. I'm, I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying, maybe that will work. Oh, you're you're giving me a maybe grade? Yeah, yeah on your tight end position. Oh, on the yeah, tight end. Yeah, no, no, ends. I'm not okay. the whole team. Just the trying to think of what could go wrong for your tight end position is everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, like, that, that like, definitely could. If Watson plays the way that we've seen him play the last two years, if Darren Waller continues to be old and hurt. And if uh, Brock Bowers yeah, goes, to, goes the Chargers. to the Chargers. Yeah. I am curious who will be Mr. Irrelevant here in five picks. I will read you Kyle's team. Kyle, I want you to think about uh, what you've of, done. What you've done to him <laughs> and what you what you like I, about your team. That was a great moment for me. Bijan Robinson, Kenneth Walker, David Montgomery, Kendra Miller, and Gus Edwards are the running back 
core for your roster. Marvin Harrison, Stephon Diggs, Brian Thomas, Romeo Dobbs, Lockett, Gabe Davis, Wandale, Mims, Burks, and why not throw Alec Pierce and his one deep catch a year into the lineup? It's going to be a great week. Kelsey and wow, he's got Brevin wide Jordan receivers. at tight end. And then who's his quarterbacks? Fields, Daniel Jones, and Bryce Young. Uh, how are you feeling, Kyle? It could work. <laughs> That's best ball, baby. That's best ball. So any other thoughts, Jason, on your roster? Any uh no, I'm, I'm, Any regrets? I'm, I'm fairly happy. I, I like the way that uh, some of the positions fell to me. There are obviously, every draft, there's players that you you would have been happier if so-and-so just made it two picks further. Yeah. And Like Mark Andrews? Like Mark Andrews. You got that, a favorite pick in your draft right now? Is there like one that you're like, yeah, I, that one Kyle didn't take? Favorite, <laughs> favorite pick in the draft. I actually think it is Jalen Hurts at the 3-4 turn. Even though it's early... I like that it opens up another roster spot for me. The tush push being active, he gives a really, really <laughs> high floor. Activate the tush push. Um, okay, that does it. And again, if you want to see the full draft board, how it all played out, head to YouTube, YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. Make sure you subscribe over there. Make sure you click the bell. Hopefully, you enjoyed this bonus episode of the show. We're gonna um, for for best ball. If you are into best ball. Highly recommend uh, the UDK Plus, where the part of the DFS pass, which that essentially unlocks during the season, there are best ball rankings from from our guys Borg and Betts uh, that live inside there. Uh, those will go for uh, go live on June first, and also check out the uh, the DFS betting podcast because the, the guys over there do a great job talking. Just you know, all sorts of fun stuff, including best ball. All right, Brooksy, unless there's something I'm forgetting, I think we're going to wrap this one up. Let everybody enjoy the rest of their weekend. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode, and uh, we'll come back on Tuesday with some free agent predictions. Thursday, uh, we got something special planned as well, and then guess what? Free agent frenzy will be here. You do not want to miss a minute. Make sure you like, subscribe, wherever you're listening. Do us that favor, and uh, if you have the courage, tell your friends about the show. That'll do it for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Shout out to the Deucers, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, Papa Josh over there in Deucers Alley for putting this one together. We'll catch you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.